Daredevils have parachuted from cliffs or towers for centuries. When airplanes first took off, so did parachutes, as the best escape. Today's aerodynamic, lightweight chutes enable cargo and people to descend safely and land right on target. This company makes military parachutes. Each one has a 9-meter wingspan and carries up to 200 kilograms. Making the chute's canopy starts with a rugged, woven nylon fabric with nylon ribbing. This light table lets a worker detect any flaws in the fabric. The alignment between the ribbing must be consistent, spaced no more than 3.8 centimeters apart. They test the strength of the fabric by pulling the material until it rips. To pass, the fabric must withstand a minimum of 20 kilos of pulling force. A laser cuts out the parachute parts, 30 to 100 of them, depending on the model. A vacuum system stabilizes the fabric by sucking it to the table during cutting. The fabric is usually silver colored to blend in against the daytime sky. A seamstress now sews on nylon tape to attach the parts and reinforce the seams. Some panels have holes about the size of a dinner plate to funnel air between the two layers of the canopy and keep it rigid during flight. Once they've finished sewing, workers meticulously inspect the stitching. Every two and a half centimeters of stitching must have between seven and ten stitches. If the stitching is too close or too far apart, the fabric could rip. And that's the last thing you want when your chute is descending at a rate of up to four meters per second. So they mark any problem spots with a red ribbon and re-sew them. Here, a worker sews nylon tape to reinforce an area called a flare, which is a triangular patch of nylon reinforced with silicone coating. She loops the tape at one of the flare's points to later insert what's called a suspension line. The 60 lines link the 60 flares on the canopy to the jumper's harness. To reinforce each flare, she sews 42 zigzag stitches in a 2.5 cm area. The nylon suspension line arrives on spools, so workers use this machine to stretch it straight. A worker marks off up to 4.5 meters per line and cuts it on an angle to reduce fraying. Workers later sew the ends into loops so they can attach each one to the loop on the flares. A worker makes a lark's head knot in each line and ties it to a flare. This type of knot is easy to undo if a line needs replacing. Connecting the 60 lines to the canopy's 60 flares takes about two hours. Only after all these knots are secure can they pack the chute into the backpack and ship it to the customer. The nylon backpack has two identical parachutes, the main chute and a reserve. This worker is sewing the panels that'll encase the reserve chute. Extra stitching reinforces the strap connecting this steel buckle, which fastens an extra pack for up to 45 kilos. It's critical to strictly follow the company's instructions when packing the chute. You roll the ends, then fold the rest into layers. Before each jump, you have to untangle the lines and check for any tears from the previous jump. Then, you insert the lines and canopy into the pack. You pull on this red nylon handle to deploy the main chute. The yellow handle is for the reserve chute. There are straps over the shoulders, chest, belly, and legs, and three buckles attach the harness to the jumper.